It's the halfway point. And it's been a crazy season so far. Sliding all the way to the wall! As wild as you would ever see, Neil. We've had some wild weather. That is just torrential rain. And some extreme heat. The racing has been as good as we've ever seen. You're doing 260 kilometres an hour and you're playing dodging cars. And so have some of the celebrations. Now we do it all three. <laughs> There's been plenty of drama. Bang! That's off! And in the fence! That is fast! There's been landmarks reached. 500 wins in the Australian Touring Car Championship for Holden. And even some first timers on the top step. Well done, Tim Slade, winner. He's first in a supercar. We've had so many different winners. Winner number 10 in 12 races. Championship leaders and storylines. In Gisberg, it's parked. This is huge. So what's next? Who will step up? If there's one thing we've learnt, anything can happen. What a beautiful scene. We're in Townsville, 1,350 kilometres north of Brisbane, home to more than 180,000 people, the unofficial capital of North Queensland in the dry tropics, adjacent to the central section of the Great Barrier Reef. Our eighth visit to Townsville for this wonderful street circuit to resume the battle for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. Look at that temperature bottom left of screen, 25 degrees. Perfect sunshiny day, not a cloud in the sky. Good afternoon to you, Mark Scape. Can't wait for our 70 lap 200k instalment this afternoon. Good afternoon, Neil, and I can't either. This is a fantastic little racetrack. On the end, the end running into turn one and two is a street circuit part of what is a great little layout. On the other end is a parkland circuit. It's a hybrid style circuit. And there's our championship positions. Jamie Winkup, 1,275 points and 30 points adrift. Lowndes, McLaughlin and Winkup has a great job in qualifying and on the front row of the grid has been superb today. He's down trackside with Greg Russ. Well, the man who collected the armour all check at the end of qualifying was uh, was Jamie Wincup continuing his uh, his great run in terms of uh, quality results here in Townsville. First poll of the year for you, but I know you're big on this is all about conversion now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's obviously great to get, a, get our first poll of the year, not including the Grand Prix, but um, 70 laps, long way. We're normally used to a, a short little 100k, 120k race on the Saturday, but um, full 200k today, so it's going to be good. Nice that the, uh, the weather's dropped off a bit, like the temperature dropped off, I'd say, because it's late in the day. So um, anyway, um, I'll write my good mate. I'll race my good mate Gizzy here. We've got a better relationship than than, than Lewis and Nico, so um, <laughs> hopefully we won't tangle with each other. One of your great strengths before I let you go is your is your throttle modulation around a place like this. You've got to look after the rear tyres this afternoon, don't you? Yeah, it's going to be about tyred egg and car 22 showing he's very quick. So um, no, we're going to try to work together here. I get him. Cheers, thanks. It's race facts time in the Hino Hub. Let's have a look at the way in which things are going to unfold this afternoon. And first and foremost, let's delve back into the history of this location. We've been coming here since 2009. It's already a great event, our eighth visit in 2016. Jamie Wincup has more victories here than anybody else. And in 2015, it all belonged to Mark Winterbottom. Tremendous form in both the races. Our facts that we need to deal with, 200 k's. Big change of rhythm today compared to what we've been doing in the recent past for 70 laps. It's a long way. The boys are going to feel it this afternoon. We calculate based on averages United E85 requirement for just under 190 litres of fuel. Tank capacity in a supercar is 110 litres, but the rules require you've got to stick in 120 litres. Those two numbers don't go together, as you know, so you can stop at least twice or maybe even more, depending on how you want to deliver your fuel, but that'll be the popular way. This is an interesting number here. I've probably overestimated slightly, but averages will be 2.5, 2.55 to 2.6 litres per lap. You can fuel up and get home, therefore, from around about lap number 28. But that wouldn't be a major consideration for me today. This is not going to be about fuel. This is going to be about tyres, but on that subject of fuel, 
based on this scenario, you'll start with just over 60 litres. So the considerations to take into account here, it's a street circuit. There's concrete walls, there's big curbs, there will be chaos. Therefore, safety car probably is pretty high. Tyre deg, it's much more here than here. Certainly more on the high end of the scale. So that means that if you can get on a young tyre late in this race with whoever you're racing against on an older tyre, you'll get the benefit of the undercut and the real basics here that we always cover off. You've got to try and find a way to split your strategy in the team. Of course, the safety car ruins that party and clean air is always vital. This is what it looks like when we look at it graphically. I'll go through the basics first of all. This is what you've been seeing much of this year. Early in the race with fuel capacity on one side, laps on the other, cars are coming in relatively early, they grab their dose of fuel, they run out to the critical lap and then somewhere along the line they shift this and home they come. I don't think you're going to see a lot of that today. It will depend a little bit on the safety car. Quickly show you even tyre, as the name suggests, it's pretty straightforward. So basically looking after the tyres. But this is the one that I think you're going to see this afternoon. This is very much the way Mark Winterbottom played it last year and others. Not initially reacting, staying out there to around about this realm, taking a larger dose of fuel, trying to run as long as you can in here. And the more that you can squeeze this little block in here and shorten that up, depending on your track position and who you're racing, the younger the tyre, the better off you'll be. So he's got seven victories at this location. He's starting on the pole. Jamie Wincup is in great shape. The big question is, can anybody knock him off this afternoon? Yeah, it is a big question for sure. Wing Cup has been superb. He's very good at looking after the tyres. But let's have a look at our Virgin Australia destination board and beautiful North Queensland, Townsville. And what a racetrack it is. As I said before, it's a hybrid circuit. One end is the street circuit, which is right there, up to turn three. You run out of there across the Ross River and through this fantastic parklands, Reed Park section, big, fast flowing corners into a slow complex back to turn eight and there's the tire load turn eight turn nine turn 10 180 k mid corner speed down to turn 11 great passing spot and then that tire continues to be loaded back to the slowest corner on the track 60 kilometers an hour in first gear onto the main straight this is a great little layout we've had some great racing over the years and it's a place that is very very easy to make a mistake on you've got to get yourself into a zone where you flow the car and make sure you look after the tire Let's go back down to Greg Rust on the grid. Scafi, as you know, a decade ago at Bathurst, this guy right here sang the most incredible rendition of David Bowie's hit, Heroes. Fast forward to 2016 on the streets of Townsville and Ivor Davies, his iconic Aussie band Ice House, are back with the supercar fraternity. And it is fantastic to have you here. Really excited about it. Our, our uh, crew and uh, the, all of our stuff have been here since Tuesday. Buildings, stages, it's massive, huge. So you guys are playing tonight under the super top. It's, uh, it's a pretty impressive lineup too, isn't it? Well, it's going to be great fun. And, uh, you know, I cannot tell a lie. This is not the first time we've done the, uh, the V8 cars this, uh, this year. We actually uh, played in Adelaide as well. So it's becoming a bit of a habit. Playing with the choir boys tonight, are we going to expect all those, uh, those hits that made you guys Aria Hall of Famous? We're in a great position because we actually have more of those sorts of songs than, uh, than we can actually fit into one night. So mm, don't know what we're going to play tonight. Yeah, looking forward to it. I will be there. Huge Aussie music talent. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Cheers. Well, for a guy that's uh, about to start his 500th race in the Supercars Championship, you should look a lot older than what you do. Oh, you need to look a bit closer. There's plenty of grey in here. I probably should have had a shave just for today, but no, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm actually quite young to be in the 500 club, so yeah, no, not, not going too bad. Not going too bad, mate. Um, you get, uh, it's just like an old, you know, a good wine. You get better with age. Is that, is that what you're looking at? Well, I hope so. I hope that theory's right. Car's going good, though? Yeah, there's a lot of potential in the car. Um, we threw probably too much at the setup just for qualifying today and then changed the car each run, which never ends up with a good, good result. But um, there's certainly potential there to go a little bit better. So hopefully we've tuned it up nicer for the race and, and can just get good points and then have another really good go at qualifying tomorrow. Well, I know it's not all about numbers for you, mate. You've been around for a long time. It's all about achievements and winning and doing the best for this team. But it's still, it's a, it's a great day and congratulations for achieving what you have. Yeah, thanks heaps. Todd Kelly starts out of position number 13 for our race this afternoon. What a championship season we've had. So far, nine different roles, uh, drivers have enjoyed a pole position. And in terms of winners, we've had a great variety of those. Ten different drivers have come home in the number one position so far. It has been an extraordinary season. The big question for us is, will that be added to this afternoon in terms of different winners?
Well, now a great opportunity for us to pause to sing our national anthem today. Townsville-based leading country artist is Jade Holland. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil, we will for toil. Our home is good by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, and let us sing, advance Australia fair. Chaz Mostert, great starting position for this long race ahead of you. How is it? How difficult is it going to be to manage these tyres? It's probably going to be the hardest thing to do all day, honestly. But uh, probably that, and probably get trying to get through the first couple of corners um, unscathed. So, yeah, we will see uh, how we can try about change our driving style a little bit to try and look after the tyres best we can. But um, everyone down this pit lane is uh, going to have the same trouble. It's great to have one lap pace in this car for qualifying, but different story having that that long uh, pace for the race. Yeah, it is. But the difference between this weekend, you know, two 200k races, so we do get an extra stop and we do get an extra set of tyres. So it's uh, probably might make our job a little bit easier out there today. Thanks, Chaz. Good luck. Thanks very much. Baby cool that I'm struggling to uh, keep seeing where you're at. I will have to, I've got to go and look at the timesheets because I can't follow all these uh, changes in livery. Look at Flash. Yeah, real men wear pink. Is that right? Apparently. Right. Hey, uh, it's a big weekend though. 400th round for DGR Team Penske added in there. They've uh, contributed to a few. Um, you know, it's big for big for the, the history of the sport, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It uh, you know shows how long Dick's been around and the legacy that uh, you know Dick has and you know, it's since then uh, became DJR Team Penske, so um, yeah, look, 400 rounds is uh, it's a pretty good milestone, and hopefully we can top the day off with a good result. Would be how do you think about that top result coming today? I mean, uh, the car you obviously yesterday was a bit of a challenge today, it looks a bit better. Um, Ty Dig, lots of things are going to come into play. How you feel? You guys are looking? I think we're okay. Um, you know, a longer run suits our car a little bit better, but uh, you know, we're probably a little bit, probably one session behind where we need to be. We really struggled yesterday, but. You know, to change the car so much and, and uh, you know, pull this out of the bag. Um, you know, we've come a long way, but you know, we've still got a little bit to go. But the times are very close. Um, you know, a half a tenth would have put me, you know, well inside the top five. So, uh, yeah, look, we just have to do some street fighting and uh, hopefully get further close to the front. That's what we're here for. That's it. Will Davison, it seems like we've been building up, building up, building up all day. We're finally here for this big 70-lap uh, race. Yeah, it's been a long day of standing around. We've had plenty plenty on, um, but yeah, lots of anticipation. Uh, just the usual, nerves going crazy, but uh, looking forward to a great turnout here. Weather's insanely good, and I'm just, I'm looking forward to hopefully an awesome race. It's always a good battle around here. I know that previously you've said you're probably more confident in the race pace of the car as opposed to qualifying one lap pace. I'll just roll with that, but um, <laughs> yeah, certainly you could see on used tyres yesterday, you try and look at what others are doing. We, we seem pretty good. So um, sixth, you know, anytime you're top three in this category, you sort of, you have a sense of relief, uh, but we're obviously hoping a little more this morning, but it's, you know, these stints could be really long potentially, and being sixth isn't going to mean much uh, at the end of one of these long stints if you've got the car nailed. So um, we're going to have to go hard. We're going to have to be smart. It's going to be an interesting race. Good luck, Will. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Will Davison was the winner here on Saturday in 2013 for Ford Performance Racing. Garth Tander had a win in 2013. He also had one in 2014. It was the last time that Garth actually won a supercar race. Beautiful conditions out there this afternoon. Magnetic Island just off the coast. Enormous number of families in town have come up to take advantage of the school holidays to enjoy the resumption of play in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. And that shows perfectly from the vantage point over towards the north from the Castle Hill side of the precinct, Mark, what this all looks like. So it is a great scene. It's a colourful scene. It's a very busy time down in the pit lane, the pit paddock, and on the grid with Rihanna Cree and Greg Rust and Greg Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Crompton. Uh, Mr. Lowndes, I know I'm going to state the obvious, 104 wins in your supercars career, but you haven't won one at Townsville. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Murph. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, state the obvious, but uh, it's actually here in Pukekohe, the two tracks that I've uh, failed on, but uh, 
Look, we, I wouldn't call it a fail. Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, we had some good results, but they've been up and down. And, uh, you know, I enjoy the track. We didn't get the best out of qualifying, which I'm sure everyone said. But uh, 200 k's around here, it's all going to be about the tyre life. And you're pretty good at looking after that. Good luck, buddy. Cheers, thank you. 12 months ago, this guy here, Mark Winterbottom, cleaned up on the streets of Reed Park in Townsville on the way to ultimately winning the Supercars Championship crown. That was a year ago, though. It's going to be tough this afternoon. This game stepped up a bit in 2016, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough, no doubt. Um, interesting that the sun's actually coming down quite early today, so that should drop temperature and make it a little bit easier on the drivers. The, the tyres are, are copping a, quite a flogging here this, uh, this weekend, so um, it's probably not, not the most technical term, I don't know what I mean anyway, but uh, uh, yeah, with the sun coming down, we should see some long stints and some different format strategies, and we'll see what wins out, but um, yeah, it's tough. There's a lot of quick cars. Keep an eye out for that, and you. Thank you. Afternoon ahead, but James Courtney, I know the hard work is still to come, but I'm sure there is a sense of relief that you're here at this pointy end of the grid. Yeah, it's good to be able to see the real lights and the uh, repeater set, so it's uh been a bit uh, hard and, and uh, average in the qualifying department of, of late, so it's great to be up this end of the grid. Uh, Going to make turn one a lot easier than what it was last time. But, uh, but no, yeah, pretty pumped and uh, cars normally do pretty well here. We've been third the last three years in a row, so uh, or second, sorry. So uh, yeah, pretty pumped. We're certainly looking forward to a good race and no doubt the HRT fans are as well. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. We're not really that used to seeing uh, the 33, Volvo, sort of this far back on the grid, mate. 17th, a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, down to you or the car or a combination? Uh, look, probably more so my side. Uh, car probably wasn't the best, but, um, I, yeah, I made a mistake, and that's just that what, that's what hurt us. So, yeah, it's my fault we're back here, so we've just got to push on and get, get on with it. What, uh, what area are you sort of looking at? I mean, obviously, everyone's pushing so hard. We are such a tight championship. A tenth is going to move you a long way up. What was the, the area that uh, probably slowed you down? Uh, turn one. Yeah, I just I just went in too hot and uh, trying to get that middle meter, uh, that you know that tenth that I needed, and um, just, just just yeah, it fell over. So um, it's so close these days in the supercar championship. So you just got to get on with it. Race car. Uh, race car, we'll find out. We've been pretty good on race uh, miles um, at other tracks, including Perth, and we're a high degradation track. So I feel like we're going to be good on the soft tyre, so we'll soon find out. OK, cheers. Cheers. And further up the grid on row five is where we find Scott's teammate in James Moffat. That's a great effort in qualifying. What's it like as a race car? Hopefully it's good, Rusty. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're happy with qualifying. It's been a big struggle for us so far this year, so to be a bit further up the grid is always nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously we have to have a good car over 200 k's now. We hope it's good for you. Go get them. Thank you. So James Moffitt has qualified there in uh, position number nine in the uh, Wilson Security Pace Volvo S60. He was pretty pleased with that. Um, but as you heard his teammate before say a few moments ago, he wasn't overly thrilled, although he was on the tools last weekend at <laughs> Queensland Raceway, Scotty McLaughlin. He was helping his mate out, Kel Tressida, at a card event outside Ipswich. So let's learn more about mastering the Townsville streets. Our driver who's won here three times nailed ten podiums for the GoPro hot lap, Garth Tander. Welcome to a flying lap of the Townsville street circuit brought to you by GoPro. Just over the start finish line now, flying down the front straight. Grab six gear just before the turn one kick. Flat out through here, 260k an hour. Hard on the brakes, 150 millimetre board. Back to second gear. New surface here. Get hard on the gas. As early as you can, run nice close to the wall. Up to fourth, back to second for turn three. Important to get her up on the curves here. Nice and close to the exit wall. Third gear, fourth gear. Turn five now, really hard to get it into the apex neatly. And then turn six is all about jumping over this curve. Exit curve as well. Hard on the brakes, back to second. Second gear, turn seven. Over the apex curve at seven. Over the apex curve at eight. Hard on the gas now. Turn 10 flat out. Fifth, fourth gear. Fifth gear to run down to turn 10. Hard on the brakes, back to sixth gear. Really hard on the brakes this track. Feed the throttle in. She wants to get Taylor here all the time. Grab third gear early. Out to the limo. Don't muck it up now. Back to second gear for the last corner. Get her in the apex. Last corner on the track. Hard on the gas. Spin the tyre off and exit, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear across the line, and that's a flying lap of Townsville.
Great ride around this precinct. Thank you, Garth Tander, car number two for the Holden Racing Team. He's qualified down in 20th position for our race this afternoon. It's actually 66 races since Garth's won a supercar race, and that was right here, as I mentioned a few moments ago. Great scene looking at the cars from the chopper as they line up in preparation to depart the grid. Well, Temperatures dropped about a degree. It's still pretty significant. Northeasterly breeze out there of around about 25 odd kilometres an hour. Here's the way they line up this afternoon. And it's been three in a row in terms of poles for Red Bull Racing. Jamie Whitcup gets the job done from Shane Van Gisbergen. And a season best for James Courtney out of position three. Chaz Mostert alongside him, followed by our series champion Mark Winterbottom, who cleaned up here last year. Will Davison is sixth in the championship in the form of those two, Slade and Caruso, in the recent past at Winton. Darwin's been outstanding. Coulthard and Lowndes. David Reynolds next in the queue. Best qualifying for Davey for 2016. Todd Kelly, congratulations. Your 500th supercar start in a star-spangled career for him. Looking further afield to Rick Kelly and Jason Bright. Jason's had some success at this location in the past as well. Nick Perkat, grid penalty for him, plus two positions. I spoke about Garth Tander before. Scott Pye, they've not been able to find a balance in that car this weekend. Alongside him, Chris Pitha, who was abseiling off Castle Hill earlier in the weekend. Spare a thought for Kurt Gostecki. He's just turned 18 years of age. And as Todd Kelly now enjoys his 500th version of racing one of these cars, Kurt starts way back at the very beginning, race number one in what will no doubt be a long career for the youngster. And what a place to do it, Neil. This is the Parkland Reed Park section, which is more like a permanent racetrack. And as you can see, fast flowing corners mixed with some very tight, complex areas that are easy to overrun. That's into turn 11. That's one of the best passing positions. But this left-hand rear tyre is loaded all the way out of that complex at turn 8, right round 10, right round 11, around 12, and back to the final corner. Jamie Winkup will line up on pole position for the first time this year. Can you believe that? Round 7 of the year. And this is Winkup's first pole. And Scaifey, one of the things he said to me on the grid before, which I think is really interesting, is the relationship he has with Shane Van Gisberg. In his words, it's better than Lewis Hamilton versus Nico Rosberg. <laughs> but, but whoever gets ahead of the other is going to have pit priority. That's a big story, Murph. It is a big story. Now the big story for me is James Courtney starting on grid three. What a great job in qualifying. He has won here. He's only one of uh, five guys that have won a race here in Townsville. Will he be able to add to that today? The challenge is there for Holden Racing Team, as we know. But James Courtney, he likes this place. Bring it. And he likes street circuits, boys. Thanks for the update from the side of the starting grid down there. There's James on screen. Remember that drive from James Courtney at the Clipsal 500 earlier in the year in the great battle wow. with Jamie Wincup. That was a wow moment with a big exclamation for our championship season. What a way to start. They're coming into position, it is a 635 metre run from that control line down to the apex of turn two. Cold tyres, 200 kilometres. 70 laps. The sun's dropping, the temperature's dropping, the track conditions will change the thunderous roar of supercars in Townsville. Race 14, set. And a lovely start, Jamie Wincup immediately converted the revs, transferred the power, minimised the wheel spin, and he leads through one on the run down to the right-hander at two. He covers down the dirty side over James Courtney. Van Gisbergen's out wide, he'll swoop down. Davison a good start. James Moffat down the inside of Tim Slade. This is where it gets interesting between two and three at this racetrack. Van Gisbergen prevails. Courtney drops back into third. Up the inside is Winterbottom on Caruso. Not much space there. Big moment there for Van Gisbergen, who went round the outside of James Courtney at turn two. In fact, I thought Courtney had the best start. He was right up in behind. Winkup had to move it over and cover him. So great start by Winkup, great start by Courtney, but a really good move by Van Gisberg, and that'll be a telling move in this 200k race this afternoon. Scott McLaughlin's reporting on the radio that somebody hit him in the congestion down at turn two. We'll monitor his progress. Remember, he was down the order. Look at Rick Kelly, the oh. seat leaders, and down the inside goes Garth Pander in the whole racing team car as well. And we've got a flat tyre for Dale Wood, car number 96. So there was obviously some biff and barge back in the pack. On board now with Craig Lowndes. Lowndes is 13th in the field. Have a go at the turn 13 congestion. 
Rick Kelly, great job. Come for 15th. He's past Craig Lowndes. He's got to 12th. That's a very good first lap by Rick Kelly. And Wing Cup, who got a magnificent start as this battle unfolds with Jason Bright down the inside of Todd Kelly in behind Cam Waters. Using all the road. There's not much road left on the way out of turn two there. Cam Waters down the inside now. He's got that move made. So they're actually uh, putting that back into the garage. Oh, that is bad. Uh, and you can see the tyres popped off the rim in the left rear corner for McLaughlin. So by bringing in the garage, more people can work on the car. They can put the incompressible jacks under it and deal with the issue. And that was Dale Wood in the foreground, car number 96. There's the speed cam. This is on the exit of turn 10. Winterbottom, absolutely no space on the outside of that car. He's chasing Mostert. A huge championship moment for Scott McLaughlin. Remember, he's third, and around they go. So contact, oh, and straight into the back is Percat into Rick Kelly, who'd made so much ground. There's Slade, but, mate, Kelly, but and Percat. Huge damage to the front of Nick Percat's LDM Commodore. And Tim Slade on the radio. Here's the battle with Mostert in behind Davison. They're battling for fourth and fifth. So Courtney's putting pressure on Van Giersbergen. Huge pressure in here. Caruso, good job. Fabian Coulthard right up in behind across the curb. Beautiful manoeuvre early in the race for Van Giersbergen to get around the outside of Courtney. But now it looks like Courtney is, in terms of speed, putting pressure on Shane. A lot of damage to the yeah. Nissan Altima. The right-hand front tyre is rubbing on the front air dam. And there's damage to the back and the front of Rick Kelly's car 15. It's a three into one. Didn't go for those guys down at turn 11. So we'll get more on that story for you. Big pressure at the moment from Chaz Mostert on Will Davison. This is the battle pack. Position number four at the moment, Will Davison. We're riding with Mostert looking down the inside of 11. Down to 70 kilometres an hour and Will covers. Michael Caruso tucked in behind. Mark Winterbottom and Fabian Coulthard off to a pretty good start. Bright's made big progress. He's up to 13th. Now, Bright, he was down the order. Uh, 16th in quality, so he's made a couple of good solid spots. I dare venture to say that some of that was as a result of the midfield push and shove. Wind Cup, meantime, is checking out. There's the margin, 1.7 seconds. Down the inside comes Mostert. He gave it a big lunge then. They've got to be a little bit careful with how much energy they jam into the brakes around here most an ideally positioned for the run to three he's got just enough of the car off the inside now he forces the issue and chaz gets through runs a little wide hops over the exit curve that was clever by mark winterbottom to not dive in the hole there he was going to fire down the inside of will davison and will would have had no choice but to turn down and damage both cars so mark winterbottom very patient very good job by the series champion now remember McLaughlin, as I said before, third in the championship, parked in the pit. He's back out there now, but huge championship implications for the young Volvo driver. Courtney in behind there, Van Gisbergen. Will's just blocking. He moves the car over in the braking area like that. He'll get into a bit of trouble for closing down on Mark Winterbottom if he, if he continues to do it. This is turn 13, final corner, slowest corner on the track. Slade's reporting something broken in the front of car number 14. This is the guy that cleaned up in Winton and then got on the podium again in Darwin. He was trapped down there at turn 11 in that contact. Here's the replay of the start. Perfect start for, uh, for Jamie Wincup. James Courtney did a good job to force the issue down at two, but then Shane was able to get him on the run up to three. Here we are on board with Craig Lowndes. Fabian Coulthard off to the left. We'll just ride with the boys down here and have a look and a listen. Craig was very conservative. Big push and shove back there though, so there was actually already a bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact involving Slade. Probably would have got a steering arm bent out of that. It was pretty significant. Oh, that is Scotty, Scotty McLaughlin, yeah. so that was a nasty whack. And that is Nick Percat behind car number triple two. And on the outside then was Dale Wood as well. Here we are down at uh, turn 11. So it was Rick Kelly that tangled there with uh, Tim Slade. The reason I'm hesitating is they've changed the colour on Tim's car this weekend. It takes a moment for the old boy to process the new colours. It's the same number, new colours. Here's another view on board. 
Chaz Mostert having a look up the inside here of Will Davison on the run to three. That was a nice move. He had about one eighth of the car up there, but he had just enough of it there for presence. Will would have seen him in the mirror and to turn down on him, he would have rotated across the nose. That was a clever play. Exactly right. So we were on board with Craig Lowndes and it showed you the frenetic activity, the awareness is so important for all the drivers to know where you are in proximity with other cars when you get down to turn two there. So after you've gone off the start through the little kick and it was beautiful work by this man Winkup. What a start. Not a skerrick of wheel spin. Made the car walk immediately and so did James Courtney. This man, huge damage for Slade and this is the front tyre. Yeah, so he was reporting something broken, uh, but it was in fact, we believe, a flat tyre, grass and garbage in the front of that. They changed, he's come out just in front of Jamie Wincup, so running the risk of going down a lap. And this ends the momentum that he had when we spoke to him a little bit earlier in the garage. It's going to be a big fight back for him. And remember, he already clawed into the top 10 in the championship after the last couple of rounds. That'll be a great frustration. Meantime, just before we go back down to the pit lane, that's Lowndes having made a spot. Craig has gone up to position number 10 in front of James Moffat behind David Reynolds. Well, guys, uh, Tim Slade came in. He had that flat tyre. I uh, quickly spoke to Brad Jones if there was any steering damage. He hadn't reported anything else, so they just changed that, put some fuel in it, sent him on his way. Rick Kelly, while well, they were holding him out there, he obviously had rubbing going on uh, off the front splitter. But I spoke to Scott Sinclair at this stage. They want to try and keep him out and uh, avoid bringing, in, bring in, bringing him in this early. Richard Holway, engineer for Scotty McLaughlin, tells me the reason they brought that car into the garage, Scott's fear was that there was suspension damage. It appears to be OK. He since radioed after that tyre being changed to say car 33 feels all right. Now, they did push the car back out into the lane. It wasn't ideally placed, but at full stretch, they were able to get some fuel on board. Just over 50 litres. With our 120 litre drop in this race, he needs about 70. He'll have a stop of about 19 seconds for fuel before the end of this race. Yeah, thanks, Rusty. That's Good to clear that up because we thought there was severe damage. Looking at that onboard shot of Dale Wood and McLaughlin coming together, coming out of turn two to turn three, I thought for sure that that was going to be significant damage. As it turns out, it looks more like, oh, oh big moment. That was almost off the road straight away there for Winkup. He was trying very hard. He locked a wheel. Replay here with Lowndes also. This is the run down to 11 on James Moffat. Is there contact there? That was very close. Now that cost Jamie. He'd eked out a, a margin of two plus seconds. It's down to 1.4 now. And he's probably got a mark on a tyre as a result. I think he thought about sneaking down the inside down there on Tim Slade at turn 11. But that was not going to work out from that far out. Back is Bergen on screen. There's Courtney. This is P2 and 3. Ooh, gee, he almost went off the edge of the road then. You could... You can carbon copy that and continue to run that out all weekend because we saw it yesterday, we've seen it today, and we're probably going to continue to see it. Those two in particular yeah. have been 11 tenths all weekend in that location on the racetrack. Good, good place to witness a supercar in action. That's a, a ton and a half at its absolute limit down there on grip and ride control. So that incident that you saw before involving Rick and Tim Slade is under investigation. We'll hear more about that one. So 1.3 seconds is the gap win cup to Van Gisbergen. Red Bull Racing Australia 1 and 2. Right, we've got a uh, pit lane uh, penalty for car 15 for a driving infringement. Self-explanatory. Race director Tim Schenken is going to give car number 15, Rick Kelly and the Sengled Nissan, a little tour through the pit lane for the role that he played in the incident down at turn 11. So he had the rear brakes locked. That one gets marked as careless driving. Melbourne City FC colours for Michael Caruso with the other new colours of Fabian Coulthard's car as well. And then David Reynolds in behind. I spoke to David at the hotel last night and said, are you enjoying life at Erebus? He said, I love it. And sometimes people really respond to the notion of a single car team and the focus around them. It's a good team spirit. He's a happy young driver at the moment and trucking well. So Reynolds at present, in fact, is in ninth position and he's just on 10 seconds from the lead. And I said to him, and he actually agreed with me, I said, I don't mean to be rude, but I reckon you're ahead of where you probably thought you were going to be this year. And he went, absolutely. He wasn't sure whether or not he'd integrate into the team as well as he has, but they're doing a terrific job down there in that Penrite Holton Commodore at Erebus, led by Barry Ryan. Quite a lot of experience in that organisation. And they've got that car working well. And keep in mind the car that's next in the queue 
in the light blue with Michael Caruso when we were last in Darwin on the Saturday. Michael was a race winner. Absolutely. And we're on board there with Dave. He's currently ninth as a stop start with Cam Waters coming in in the Monster Falcon. But I think your point is very good because he enjoys the non-politics of being pretty much a single car outfit. And he's a very good little driver. He was very fast here last year. Cam Waters has done a good job here this weekend. He's very good under brakes. And this is the first proper stop that we're seeing now. Rick Kelly in behind. A little bit early on the blue strategy that I pointed out in the Hino Hub. Is that clearer? Yeah, we got that. Yeah. Happy. Meantime, it's a drive through for Rick Kelly. Seconds now, mate. Nearly there. Go, go, go. That was you saw in the background. Yep. So, Cam Waters, got to keep ch checking yourself and stopping and thinking about the fact that it's still really early days in Cam Waters' supercar career. And here we are back to the lead and the tail end of this race because Tim Slade tangled up with Rick Kelly at turn 11. He's come in and dealt with that flat right front tyre, gone back out and he'd be doing everything in his power at the moment to not be lapped. Absolutely, he'd be trying very, very hard. The bad part for Jamie Winkup is you get all the hot air now behind Tim Slade. So he gets hot, his brakes get hot, tyres get hot. Jamie Winkup will be thinking to himself at the moment, I need to get by, and Slade will be doing everything to stay in front. This is actually starting to peak a little bit with Caruso and Fabian. And Michael's beginning to show some signs of impatience. He's just starting to move around. He wants to put a little bit of pale blue in the rear vision mirror of the Falcon at the moment just to see whether he can unsettle him. If there's a logical place, if you're in the right location here to be able to nag somebody into submission, it's down at turn 11. <laughs> and that's what it is. That's right. Can you please leave me alone? <laughs> and I'd say Fabian's just got a little struggle going with that car at the moment. It's not quite the way he wants it. And that's when you see him effectively playing bobble uh, and cork. He's the cork, by the way. And uh, so he's just got a little cue forming behind him at the moment. So Michael's not close enough on this lap. He was the previous lap. They'll continue in that seesaw. And whenever Lowndes is in the mix back here, you know that he's going to try and take advantage as well. And that's Dave Reynolds just in front of Craig. So Winkup, Van Gisbergen, Courtney, Mostert, Davison, Winterbottom, Coulthard, Caruso, Reynolds, Lowndes. Now Garth Tander, he started 20th. He's in 11th position, so he's been the biggest mover and shaker. He's gained nine spots in these opening laps, like 12 of 70. As we look at the Red Rooster chopper cam, this is a great shot of 255k. Get the car stopped, turn it in, make sure you make the apex. And this little battle with those four cars is emerging as a pretty volatile one because Caruso is putting a lot of pressure onto the back of Fabian Coulthard. He's done a great job at the previous round of Darwin. Let's see whether he can get by Fabian. We're on lap 12 of 70. 59 laps remaining. We've been racing now for just on 15 minutes, and the scenario is this. Jamie Whitcup, Red Bull Racing, Australia Hold Commodore, with half a second thereabouts over Shane Van Gisberg and James Courtney, neatly tucked in third at the moment, but a big battle brewing in this next queue of cars. Davis and Winterbottom, Coulthard, Caruso and Lowndes. And boys, there's a few more pit stops about to start to take place. Team Vortex and Techno are planning something. I'm not sure which car that's for, but Cam Waters, that was a planned stop. Brendan Hogan at ProDrive just confirmed that that was part of their strategy. Obviously with Mark Winterbottom just ahead too, they didn't want to get the stacking situation. They put 45 litres in that car, so for his next stop, he will be stationary for 20 seconds. I just quickly walked into Nissan Motorsport and spoken to Scott Sinclair. I said it's too early to pluck Michael Caruso out of this scenario and he said absolutely he's going to have to cope with it for now. Yeah, so it's pretty hectic out there at the moment because this is the start of the real strategy. Roughly 45 litres have gone in, 50 litres for some, so not much difference at this point in terms of how this is unfolding. This is very much in line with that blue strategy. All clear. All clear at the front. Got a clear pit line when you drop. A couple of seconds there, Clay, Craig. All clear when you drop. All clear when you drop. Nice stop. Nice and calm. The thing about this sport is you've got to make a complex pit stop. Waters there it is. Uh, Waters has just got a, a little undercut going there on Craig. So he's jumped by. Depends on how much fuel, fuel. we need to Lowndes car. We're going to study that in greater detail. 
some of that equalizers in the second stop here's this little battle that continues wind cup is trying to do everything he can to sneak down the inside here and if he does that he puts one lap on tim slade and they'll be a bit crestfallen at brad jones racing when they see that in comes james courtney from position three let's watch this stop very carefully there we go, there we go. A little bit short there. Oh, the drama with the left hand front wheel. That gun wouldn't release that wheel nut then. So they've okay, changed. Mate, all clear, all clear, mate. Lucky Where's got away with it. Go. Fuels the governing go, go, element. Go, go, so though it looked awkward, there was no time penalty. Adrian Burgess is trying to put razor sharp discipline in this outfit at the moment. It's no secret they've had a tough time since Adelaide early in the year. Not a bad stop, a stop otherwise for James Courtney Carr number 22, who's been a winner here previously. And out he goes. Now, the other thing about uh, Slade, although he's now gone that lap down, was awkward because they wouldn't have wanted to come in that early and in come Red Bull. They did get a reasonable dose of fuel into Tim's car. But now that he's gone a lap down, if the safety car comes out, it does hurt. This is Shane Van Gisbergen from position two. Yeah, I'll let you down now, mate. Mate, you're going to have a, a good lead in here. You're probably waiting you down now. This is... This is good strategy by Van Gisbergen. This will be the okay, undercut. Guys, if, as long as right they put the same amount of fuel right, in, there's a chance right. to jump wing cup right, here. A little bit over the marks there where Shane ended up parking that car. We'll get a number for you. So there's the gap between Van Gisbergen and Courtney. We saw that earlier. They've been battling from the start. So Shane's got a little gain there, but we'll work that out in terms of the fuel loads. And I reckon Wink Up will be in the next lap because he can't afford to be too far offset from Van Gisbergen. Car that you can see being released from the pit lane at the same time is also Scott Pye, so the Shell Helix entry's been in. Meantime, Craig Lowndes has just done personal best first and third sectors and race best middle sector in the Team Vortex Holden Commodore. Here we are on board with Jamie. He's our race leader, 6.1 seconds over Chaz Mostert. He's got a bit of clear air to enjoy for the moment. Very difficult down there in turn two as Reynolds comes in because of the setting sun. Hard to find your brake reference in those conditions. And a lot of patchwork in terms of the different surfaces down there. So as the sun closes in on the end of the straight, the shaded areas, it's hard to determine where you actually are. Dave Reynolds, little top up for the cool suit. Pretty physical circuit, this one. No, no break for the drivers. Looked reasonably hectic, that Erebus stop. <laughs> well, the left rear tyre wasn't that close, so... I don't know. He had to do a fair gallop to go and find it. It was almost in another postcode. But he got away with it because, again, fuel's the governing element there. In comes Win Cup from the lead of the race with a six-second margin, car number 88. Seven race victories at this location. Jamie reported straight away, you, you heard that. In pit lane, which is always the code to tell the team that you're in pit lane, give them the maximum amount of time yeah, to get yeah, organised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not too much going on here, mate. Tires and fuel going on here. And in the bottom screen oh, is Van Gisbergen. So let's keep an eye on this one. Okay, Critical yeah. stop for oh, Wink Cup. Series leader. Just the next time. They were both the same. They both overran. So see the marks? They were one foot. That comes from energy. That comes from wanting to get in there. And a slippery pit lane. Here we go. Shane will be very close when they get to the braking area. Jamie's on cold tyres. Shane's on tyres that are up to temperature and pressure. He'll be right on him here, so he's going to harry him for the next couple of laps. By the time they get about two-thirds of the way through this lap, the temperatures and pressures will normalise for Jamie Winkup's tyres, and he'll be well aware of the presence of the other car. This is on. This is great stuff. This is the body language and Van Gisberg across the kerb. 
and both guys are very experienced. We, we've seen this year so many times the level of intensity between the teammates. Davison's come in as well, leaving Chaz Mostert in the lead. There's Will on cue. So fastest lap of the race is Jamie Wincup. New lap record. Verge across in three, two, one. Come across, nice easy on the mark. 16 seconds. 16 seconds at 3.75 litres is 60 litres. There's nothing else in pit lane. Clear at the front, Whitey. Swinging on fuel, you've got six seconds. Oakley, Oakley, Oakley. Nice job. That was a nice job. So there's a bit of disparity in terms of the fuel that they've put in. There's not much between Van Gisberg and a wink up, but there's a lot between Lowndes and his teammates. Lowndes put 60 litres in. The others have done 40 and 45 respectively. So this will be interesting. So Lowndes down the inside of Cam Waters at turn two. Nice braking manoeuvre. Textbook pass from Craig Lowndes. A fair wag of the tail on the exit of turn two, then Craig Lowndes. <laughs> so they are down in 18th and 19th now after everybody cycles through their stops. I was only having a little laugh because Cam Waters blocked Craig Lowndes yesterday afternoon in the closing laps on brand new tyres. Lowndes served him up, but he didn't block him this time because he said to him, he said, if you do it again, I'll fetch you. So it was pretty ugly. <laughs> That's the margin. Things have settled down now between the two key runners as it corrects when everybody takes their stop. First in the queue that stopped is Jamie Wincup. He's 12th on screen. We'll show you the margins now. Wincup over Van Gisbergen, over James Courtney. These guys have all taken that first dose of fuel. Then there's a bit of air back to car number 19, Will Davison. It'll be a corrected fourth. And then remember the next car in the queue, Rick Kelly, was a pit lane drive through penalty for his role in the incident at turn 11. Then it's Garth Tander. And as is his custom, he fires on street circuits. And then it's Craig Lowndes, followed by Cam Waters, Scott Pye, James Moffat, David Reynolds, Chris Pippa, Scott McLaughlin, who was in the wars at the very commencement of the race. Car number 33, Dale Wood, was in the wars as well. And Tim Slade ended up a lap down. They had to put a tyre on that car. And here is Mark Winterbottom as well. Now, Mark Winterbottom is actually still the leader of the race at the moment, by the way. So things are out of sequence. We've got, you know, in round terms, half the field have and half haven't stopped. Garth Tander got some gain in terms of track position because he put less fuel in versus someone like a Dave Reynolds who put roughly 75 litres in. Tander's put 40 litres in. Here's Mostert who pulled up perfectly on the marks. Nice stop. Nice and calm. See, Chaz is a guy at some stage who's very likely to add to this winner's tally. For sure. He goes well on street circuits. He gets a reward for his style of driving at a location like this. Pro Drive Racing Australia got mighty cars. Tim Blanchard, Cool Drive entry car number 21. So Winterbottom leads over Coulthard, Caruso, Bright, Kelly. They're stretching this first run. Now they're doing what I also discussed in the Hino Hub. They're looking to try and make, look, have a go here at Tanda on Rick Kelly, trying to get down the inside. Had to be very cautious there not to end up making contact. And you can see the scars on the back of Rick's car from the incident down at Turn 11 earlier on. What I was going to say there, Mark, is that these guys that are running a little bit longer are trying to shorten up the next stint on the next incoming set of tyres and playing their strategy along to keep that last block as short as they can and have the best possible tyre quality. And some of that also takes into account your vehicle performance. Kurt Kostecki is coming in for his first pit stop in a supercar championship race as well in car number 18. And Michael Caruso has gone up one position, by the way, over Fabian Coulthard. He's passed him. Yeah, mate, pull him on the board. Pull him on the board. That's the voice of Jeff Grepp. Jeffrey was in your ear for many years at the Holden Racing Team moment for this young fella just turned 18 years of age Feel the car drop you can go Rick. all clear to go when you go it's a good all clear still in pit lane simple all communication go. Go. so 
at three top ten results in the Dunlop series this year. That's the voice of Jason Bush. He's the engineer for that car and normally working with Lee Holdsworth. Big shout out to Lee, I'm sure he's watching today. Oh. All the best with your recovery and that was a big moment. Oh. Because there was a car trying to get into the pit. That was Wink Cup. And I don't know if it was Percat. It was, yeah, was Percat, yes. So he was trying to get from the left to the right. Just so happened the car 88 was parked there. That was a huge That could have been moment. massive. Wow. Jamie Wincup as they zigzagged and crisscrossed. We've seen over the years one or two moments that have been a little bit spooky down there. That was one of them. Bright Russell and Percat came in. Somehow Wincup was mixed up in all that process. They're making an adjustment to the back of Jason Bright's car. He looked pretty racy in the early phase. Reset fuel and reset flies. Reset fuel and reset flies. We are watching for 14 on exit. We will hopefully be the car ahead of the group. Four cars yet to stop. Here's the replay of what happened. So Percat in the black car, and then Wincup, car number 88. Nick is trying to get to the pit lane, so he breaks. Uh, actually, it looked worse on the other angle that we saw. It actually looks a little bit tidier there. It was better. And in the car, it's probably not quite as big a deal, but for us watching on television, that looked pretty spooky in the aftermath. So he fires down the inside, Nick just rolls out of the throttle, grabs the brake, looks in the mirror and parks it over into the pit lane entry. And Win fortunately for Winkup, he didn't actually make contact. Could have easily been wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact there. Jewel winner from last year, winner bottom in. All right, everybody clear. You're going to have a clear exit to Mark. About three seconds to go, mate. Go, 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 go. Perfectly on the spot. Nice stop. Lost championship positions in Darwin. Hasn't quite looked as convincing here this weekend as they have in previous years. And he's got a big race going here with former teammate Will Davison. Will's grabbed him. I think the HRT car of James oh, Courtney. Oh, correction. Tander. Tander will as well. Tander actually had it crossed up through turn one. Actually had the thing oversteering and got down the inside. Fantastic driving by Garth Tander there. You have to be impromptu. That's the spont uh, spontaneous style of move that Tan has been renowned for. He made huge ground in the early part of this lap. And the race so far has unfolded very nicely for Garth Tander. Started 20th, remember. At the moment, he's currently 8th. And that was a big moment. That was very fast. 250k sideways. Forces his way down the inside. So check this out. This is on board. Mark Winterbottom, Bottolo Falcon. There's Garth Tander, sideways and down the inside. How's the closing speed? Beautifully done. Got it stopped. That's the hard bit. You can make that move, but you've still got to stop it for the corner. Got it pulled up. Oh. And now Winterbottom returns serve. Down the inside, now the crisscross. Tander will look to get back the other side. So great racing between Garth Tander and Mark Winterbottom. As we have another look on the Red Rooster chopper cab down into turn one and nothing in it in terms of engine speed. Tander will be relishing this. It's been a bit of a drought up the sharper end, be enjoying the racing quality. We should put Frosty on the payroll for the camera crew for parking the Bottolo car in just the right spot for us to see Garth <laughs> arrive there with oversteer at turn one. That was pretty awesome, wasn't it? And uh, just imagine the view from inside the cockpit of that car. One and a half tons, 250 kilometres an hour, a little bit of opposite lock, and in a big battle with the reigning champion. Here's the overhead. Davison on the left, Winterbottom in the middle, Tander on the right-hand side with W2 on the car for this weekend as a memorial and tribute to a friend who sadly lost his life in Western Australia, sprint car driver Shane Cricky. Down the inside goes Mark Winterbottom. That was a nice clean move. Will gave him space, saw him coming. No big deal, that one, as he cleanly got by down at 11. Caruso in, by the way. And what was quite clever before was Mostert was battling with Will Davison. So he only put 49 litres in, so that was able to give Mostert track position, nice clear air in front of Will Davison. So good job by that crew to strategise Mostert into that zone. Wing Cup, Van Gisbergen, Courtney, Mostert, Winterbottom, Davison, Tander, Lowndes, Waters, Moffat. That's your top ten. 
Woods took a fair bit of fuel on, so that, though he's down in uh, 12th at the moment, he'll look a bit better later on. Here's the move from the other angle of Frosty getting down the inside of Will Davison at 11. And nicely done. Neither of those drivers had particularly high heart rates in the car at that point. No lock-up, no drama, no contact. Neatly down the inside. Will said the car wasn't bad after yesterday's practice sessions. Didn't feel great. Didn't feel ordinary, just somewhere in the middle. I don't think it's quite to his liking at the moment. He's currently sixth on the racetrack. Win Cup is the leader. Three point three seconds is the margin. Jamie Wincup over Shane Van Gisbergen, and it's James Courtney, Chaz Mostert, Mark Winterbottom. There's Aaron Russell on screen from Nick Perkat. That wonderful shot on the outside of Turn Ten. So Winterbottom, Davis, and Tander, Lowndes, Waters, Moffat in the ten, and just outside is Pi, and then Reynolds and Pitha, Coulthard. Just wondering whether or not Fabian, yeah, he took a fair bit of fuel, fuel on as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why he's dropped back the order. Replay here on the exit of turn two as Aaron Russell sneaks down the inside of Dale Wood. And that little kink has been eased slightly between two and three this year. But we've seen a lot of line pinching go on there over the years in that run. One or two arguments that have ended poorly. Well, <laughs> that's a very nice way of explaining it. But I think line pinching not really the word is playing chicken where they'd actually run the guy into the fence on purpose so they purposely eased that fence back by about a meter and a half and that from a safety standpoint has been an upgrade we're on board now with craig lounge down at turn 11. i liked our graphic before there with those three cars and it said battle pack you look at the front of nick Perkat's car looks like it's been through a war it's all pushed in at the front they're battling down there at the moment those guys for 21st, 22nd and 23rd. Craig Lowndes now being spoken to by Ludo Lacroix. And he's currently eighth. What's interesting about the way the championship table looks at this point is we watch Moffat down the inside of Cam Waters and gets him. That's for position nine for James. We're seeing evidence of the triple eight cars, Jamie, Shane and Craig in the top five and floating towards the top of the mix. For victories in 2016, Win Cups had one. But what Jamie has had, remember his championship leader coming into this event, he's had more podiums than any other driver. He's had six of them. So when he hasn't had peak speed, and we've talked about this in years gone by, what Jamie Win Cups able to do is just keep it rolling, maintain those minor positions, grab a second or a third, or if he's outside those top three, still gathering solid points along the way and contributing and putting into the bank, crediting the bank account with the type of points that you need to get the right championship outcome. So even though it's easy to say in simplistic terms, oh, well, he's back on foot, he's been in form all year. It's just not the form that we're accustomed to seeing where he's been doing more winning. It's ironic when he got out of the car after quality and said, well, I haven't done that for a while. It's yeah, been a while. Right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that was his first pole in 2016 earlier today. He's doing a nice job out there at the moment. His rhythm is good. It's four and a half second margin. Wind Cup over Van Gisbergen. Holden one, two and three at the moment. Wind Cup, Van Gisbergen, Courtney. The first of the Fords is Chaz Mostert. And where he's driving the car hard are the places that doesn't hurt the tyre. You see him there fire into turn seven, right up over the kerb sideways, gathered it up, but that doesn't hurt the tyre. It's all these right-hand corners to complete the lap that hurt the tyre. Jamie Winkup has been the benchmark man in this industry. Six championships, remember. Winkup leads from Van Gisbergen, Courtney, Mostert and Winterbottom. Our focus here at the moment is the battle between Chris Kipper and Fabian Coulthard. Ford versus Ford. Position 13 and 14. New livery this weekend for Fabian Coulthard, the Hogs Breath Cafe. Dick Johnson racing at Team Pence for Ford Falcon. A little bit more fuel was taken on Fabian's car in the first stop. That dropped him down the order, and I think that might have been a gentle touch-up to his countryman Kiwi, Chris Pippa. And now he runs to the outside, Coulthard, looking for the crisscross on the exit, and he's done it. That was a nice job. So Chris plunges in there with a bit much understeer, and uh, Fabian gave him a little short back and sides on the way out the other side of turn 13 to go, I'm here. Well, that's right, but it was a bit of Pippa also in terms of 
him moving the car over after the pass was already done. Fabian did a beautiful job of that crisscross. As I said before, that some textbook passing manoeuvres, but that was one from the outside, crisscross to the inside. Crisscross, that's crisscross. And then made that stick down the inside into turn two. Beautiful manoeuvre, and this is the replay. Back on the inside, little bump, which that's why Chris then wants to run into him. That's the little bump there that I was talking about. And that exit, very straight, very nice. Little bump on the exchange, but beautifully done, Fabian Coulthard. He, he just wiped the front bumper on it, didn't he, on the way through as he crisscrossed on the exit. Here's Garth Pander on screen at the moment. Seven between Will Davis and his former teammate and Craig Lowndes in uh, eighth position. Adrian Burgess uh, looking on at Garth Tander with the W2 on there. Obviously uh, a big moment for him running that this weekend. Yeah, I love his, uh, I think they were close friends. Uh, obviously a shame what happened, but it's uh, nice to be able to show your respects and, and do the number of justice. You know? and, he, and he's doing a great job. He started way back in 20. He got a demon start. First couple of laps made up, I think, about nine spots. And genuinely sitting there in seventh spot, you guys maybe a little bit more fuel than others. But car looking pretty good at the moment. Yeah, we just can't afford to qualify down there. We know he starts well, and we love that about him, but we'd rather he had those starts in the top two or three rows. But, all right, we're trucking along. Uh, still 40 laps to go, so anything can happen yet. Yeah, JC, his pace just looking on at the moment where he's at. Pretty good pace compared to SVG ahead of him, and obviously he had a, got a few more laps in those tyres than, say, what Mozda's got. Yeah, look, it's a shame we just lost that bit of track position on the first couple of corners. We got the start over him, but couldn't hold it down at turn two, but... Yeah, anything can happen yet. Well, it's all going to de depend when we come in for that last stop. It's going to be a bit of chicken and mouse. No one's going to want to jump first, but as soon as one does, we're all going to have to follow. Thanks, buddy. Uh, it might be us who jumps first. You never know. We'll see, we'll see how brave we are. It's chicken and mouse. <laughs> I think it's a dish <laughs> somewhere. Now, that was interesting exchange between Jason Bright and Chris Pither that resulted in Jason coming out the other side with a little bit of extra margin. So uh, let's have a look at this again in replay. Wild exit moment for Jason Bright. Then he sneaks down the inside. Ah, that's the reason why it all got a bit weird there. So there's a, a dive bomb move. And he, then he popped out the other side. So forcing the issue in the Team BOC car down the inside. Chris turned in. There was nowhere to go there. That's one of those that's a little bit hard to adjudicate. Both of them had equity in that. Riding now with Mark Winterbottom on the run down towards turn 11. Frosty's in fifth at the moment between Chas Most and his teammate and his former teammate, Will Davison. Remember that if you stay true to the basic standard strategy, we can expect to see stops in around about another 10 laps-ish. Now, that'll depend on how the tyres are trending at the moment. Lap speed doesn't look too bad. They are hurting as they go, which we expected. But remember, the temp's dropping a little bit as well, and the track is rubbering up. So those things actually help you cause slightly. And he's roughly two tenths per second faster across those last four laps than Wink Up. So good, consistent pace. Remembering his form here last year was superb. Two wins. And he drives the car beautiful. And in terms of technique, he's got a very smooth steering technique. He's got a very smooth entry braking technique. He trails the brake for a long way into the corner and then he modulates the throttle very nicely, keeps the momentum up. The thing that Winterbottom does for tyre pace is the momentum of the car stops it from just being tortured on the exit because he keeps the mid-corner pace up. And in that zone there, that's the spot that hurts the tyre. From that zone right there, from eight all the way down from the exit of 12. He's got a great finishing technique as well because it's been 88 races without a did not finish for Mark Winterbottom. That's a very important thing in the modern era. Consistency, uh, consistency, I beg your pardon, is well rewarded. And a lot of top 10 results. 14 out of 15 starts for Frosty as well. So we go back here and look at Dale Wood, Aaron Russell, Nick Perkat. This little matter of the universe is that, well, yeah, I was going to say, it's actually warfare. I don't think it's even a battle. It's been warfare for some time. And each of them in their own way have got varying scars on the car. Dale got involved in something early in the race. May have been with McLaughlin. You can see that Nick Perkat's got a little bit of damage on that car. I'm not sure about Aaron uh, in the Plus Fitness Holden Commodore on the run down there to turn 11. Now, these fellows, where are we? We're looking at them in 21st, 22nd. 
Dale Woods actually slightly out of sequence here. He's actually, because he stopped just a few moments ago for his second stop. So uh, he's just dropped into that pack. So he's got fresh tyres and he'll probably skip away. So Wink Cup now just edged that lead out to just over six seconds. He's got a beautiful flow going. Let's go on board and have a look at a full lap of this Parkland track with James Courtney, who's currently in third. situation across the top three mark wind cup van gisberg and courtney all very very similar in their fuel load now that they bring on for their next stop they all took on in the region of 45 to 50 liters in the first stop the mandatory requirement is they've got to drop 120 liters so you can see the graphic on the screen at the moment you can understand where your favorite driver sits with a number of stops what they took on where they sit on the racetrack at the moment and what our software is telling us is projecting to likely happen now i just have to qualify that because that's a theory yeah it's a dead reckoning process it doesn't yeah, take into it it doesn't take into account mistakes trips in the pit lane and uh, that's all things being equal rob star was the voice in the background in conversation with james courtney you heard him say i want to stretch this thing there's robbie number five so Robbie wants another five. I'm not sure that James jumped for joy when he heard that in the background. No. Uh, but he's looking for more laps out of James to use up this fuel range to shorten up the run on the next set of tyres. James Moffat. Nice stop right on the marker. You see the little bit of blue tape down there? He's hit it in the centre line. This will be a longish stop. James only took on 30 litres. Just waiting for fuel. 90 litres of fuel to drop in. Still a while, mate. Still a while. Car coming in five seconds. Car coming in pit lane. Go, 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 go. You're on. Nice. Just got that done before Tim Slade arrived. Hard to explain the intensity of what it's like in the pit lane when the cars are in. At five seconds. Go, go, go. It's 20 kilos of weight per wheel and tyre. It's roughly five kilos for those guns. Oh, there's a move on here between the teammates. Coulthard down the inside of Pi. And that's for position number 10 for Fabian. And he's off after Cam Waters now, who's in ninth position. Further down the road is Garth Tander. So it's a very high level of work intensity when those cars come into the pit lane to manipulate those wheels and tyres, manage the gun, not cross-thread those wheel nuts that are captive in the wheel to get the fuel on and coupled cleanly. For the car to have arrived in just the right spot, it is a team effort. Let's have a look at the replay down here at turn 11. And this is Michael Caruso on David Reynolds. Through and clean. And that's for position number 12. Here we are, replay again from onboard Michael. You know it's Michael without any graphic captions because you can tell by the downshift. It's a pretty urgent manoeuvre in his car. It's Get that into you, gearbox. <laughs> I am changing down, whether you like it or not. <laughs> it certainly is, isn't it? It's a very, very fast <laughs> manoeuvre, that one. But Dave Reynolds also assisted because he didn't turn down. He knew he was done, and he just stayed nice and wide. There's that's for position. Fabian. That's for position. He's down the inside this time of Cam Waters. Yeah, that's nice. So uh, remember, I commented that he was off after Cam Waters. Only took him another lap to get it done. So he's gone north one more position. That takes him into 
position number nine. Craig Lowndes is next in the queue. He's got a few more seconds to find before he gets near Craig, but that's good pace. Meantime, it's a nine-second gap now. Wind Cup over Van Gisbergen. and he's right in phase here this afternoon. It's the Jamie of old at this location where he has delivered so much success in his CV and to his race team over the years. Seven wins, two poles, just a crazy number of podiums and general success. And we've seen it before with him on street circuits. He's still circulating pretty quickly. The last lap for him was a one minute 14.6 plays Van Gisbergen 15-2. Yeah, it's not bad when you pick up 0.6 of a second on one lap alone. Now there could be traffic in that story. 15-6 also for Courtney. 15-1 for Mostert, but a 14-4 for That's... Mark Winterbottom. And we had that caption, that graphic up earlier that showed the, the sort of pace that Winterbottom had. That was Caruso sneaking by down there with Scott Pye as well. So keep an eye on Frosty. He's only 18 seconds off the lead. Pye comes in. Still got another stop to come for all these key runners. And uh, Todd Kelly, his old teammate David Reynolds, having a run side by side. They're just... Uh, about to kiss mirrors on the run through turn one here. David's got the ideal line. Deep by Todd. Yeah, very deep under brakes. Looking for the crisscross, but kind of know where to go down there. Oh, well done. He's going to make a liar on me. Well done, Todd. So, stayed out wide, pulled it down tight, fired up the inside. Nice move. It was a nice move. That was for 12th position for Todd Kelly. And crisscross again it's up ahead of us here on board with Courtney that was a big brake lock up for Kirk Kostecki he got it turned in lucky to get away with that one very easy to overrun that braking area great presence of mind to sidestep when there's one of the key runners a leader coming through so he's got out of the way Kurt let James go by. So now Michael Caruso is working hard on the back of Cam Waters. This is 10th position and down the inside and done. Cam's not offering much resistance there on the run into the final corner. Reynolds has come in, by the way, from 13th position for his second and final stop. Here we go. While you guys are working away there, I'm in the best seat in the house in the DJR Team Penske Gallery, just watching Scott Pye, who's popped back into position 23. On this day in 1989, you clinched your fifth Australian Touring Car Championship title. It's nice to catch up with a legend. That's amazing, isn't it? Like, <laughs> it's obviously uh, a lot different now to what it was then, but um, we were at the top of our game at that point in time, and it's just great to see that... Obviously, the shell cars are back in the thing with us, so we're looking good, yeah. Fantastic to be celebrating a special milestone today, too. 400th round for what is now DJR Team Penske. But we've got to talk about the fact you're going to have two Kiwi blokes driving for you next year. Is there a change in company policy here? Well, let's clarify this to start with, mate. This, I have just, just in the last hour or so, I've just found out that actually Fabian is a pom, mate. He's not a... He's, He's not a Kiwi, so I'm off the hook. There you go. Nice to catch up, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Born in London. This is Chaz down the inside here of both James Courtney on the run to turn three. This is position number three for Chaz. Nice move. Uh, so Dick doing everything he can to manipulate the paperwork to uh, <laughs> make sure that he assigns uh, citizenship in the other direction. Well, he said he was going to naturalise it, the Scotty McLaughlin or Fabian at some stage, yeah. so that's very funny. <laughs> so Mostert's delivering on the promise that ProDrive have been showing in these cars here this weekend. Got good pace. That was a clean move on James Courtney, who might just be hurting now at the back end of that tyre set. Remember, Rob asked him to stretch it another five laps. Water's in. There's the delivery of that fuel sight gauge. There it is. It is. Down it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you need to add that? It's just helping audio along there. <laughs> it doesn't actually gulp because of the dry brake system at vents. <laughs> it's been a long day in the Queensland sun. Here we go. Uh, wind wind come in. <laughs> Said B1 and B2. So he's got a good margin. Yeah, a bit of rubber in the front, please. Uh, can I go get a rubber on the front? A bit of rubber on the grill, please. Still got about 10 seconds. Plenty of time. Make sure those nodes are clear. Courtney's bit of there behind you, but we should be meeting him now. You've got about three seconds, mate. Make sure you've got it here. All clear. All clear. Yep. Nice 
Just stop. Go, 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 mate. Yeah, Wing come. Courtney also exits. There's a bit of urgency on the Holden Racing Team radio. Don't worry about the drink bottle was the call. So that's second stop done for James. And really, if they come away with a solid top five out of today, that's encouraging. Adrian Burgess said yesterday as Shane Van Gisbergen comes in that he's not 100% sure that it's a step I in the right to, direction. I can't quite see it. OK, guys, remember we're doing this right height change, OK? Ah. Down one, remember. Fans in and out, please. Down in the rear right height. Mate, you got a bit, uh... This is clever. Yeah. You have to swing around fairly tight here, mate. Pro Drive. Get the chemical out of the road, please. Luke, yeah, someone? Yeah, swing around. Pro Drive have got the best tyre degradation in the field at the moment. OK. Drive, I get some hobbits, please, mate. Oh, no, stay there. That was a mistake. They were going to feed a tyre into it then. Right height change, then the wheel goes on. Yeah. When they drop the rear right height, they're looking for drive traction. Here, mate, five left rear going on now. Oh, 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 yeah. That's to protect the tyre life. Oh, he's got out in front of Austin. JC. Uh, so, so, uh, that's an important stop and an important change there for. Shane Van Gisbergen to smarten up the performance of that car. Lowndes is in. That's Tanda. Tanda's racing this afternoon. All clear when you drop. All clear when you drop. So I've got an ice cream headache over that now because I thought Lowndes was going to jump a couple more guys because he had less fuel to put in there, but I thought his track position was actually going to be better than where it is. I was going to make the remark before the pit stops happened that Adrian Burgess feels that they've made improvements with the car as Waters comes down the inside of Lowndes, but was cautious in that optimism because they typically do go well here and street circuits have been their forte as we saw at the Clipsal 500 earlier in the year. But for the Holden Racing Team, if they can come away with a solid result with both cars out of today's race, it puts some energy back in the team. It vindicates people's hard work. There's a lot of stress in a race team when you're not quite achieving the results that you want to achieve particularly for a Hallmark team like that. They've got a big reputation. They know it's important to deliver, and that's what they're working on. So here's the focus now. Michael Caruso, Mark Winterbottom. Oh, big lock up for Caruso into 11. Very likely a mark on that tyre set. We'll wait for things to settle down now. So Winterbottom, Will Davison, Fabian Coulthard, Todd Kelly yet to take their second stop. So hopefully Michael Crusoe gets away with that and there's not too much of a mark on that tyre, but that was a big one. Certainly was. Big brake lock up on board now with Mark Winterbottom. There it is. So it's locked for about 50 or 60 metres on the way in to turn 11. And inside front, the unweighted tyre. So again, Mark Winterbottom doing great camera work for us, <laughs> un unwittingly. You can, but no stress. Here's Will from P2. That's in the foreground. No problem, Swain. No Scott problem. We'll do that. Tell us these guys. You merge in at three, two, one. Nice and easy on the marks. For 20 seconds, four times. So they're going to pluck a tear off on the screen. Thing, they're done there. Waiting on fuel and tyres. Fuel and tyres. The tyres are all complete at the front. We'll get that tear off, guys. We've got 10 seconds left. So we're all clear at the front. Whitey, all clear at the front. Five seconds, all clear when you drop, there is no traffic. All clear, all clear. So they can stack about four or five of those tear-offs on the screen. Much more than that, and it blurs your vision. And uh, there'll be bugs and dirt and rubber and garbage on the screen that Will Davis has asked to have that cleaned up. I'm just uh, going to grab Timmy, was just uh, tapping on Jason Gray's shoulder. Frosty doing a beautiful job out there, mate. You guys have uh, managed to run a different strategy a little bit. You're going to have a bit of fresher tyres on that car when he comes out. Where do you think he's going to pop when after the next stop? Oh, look, I think he'd be in about the same position when he, as when he came in, but you know, I think he's actually got good tyre life. So I think, you know, come the 30 laps time, 
I think he should be in a good position. Well, maybe 25 laps. <laughs> well, he, he, I mean, he has been driving beautifully this weekend again, and both your guys seem to have a little bit more confidence in their cars. Longevity as we look on now. Chaz putting a lot of pressure on the back of 97, but it seems you may have made a little bit of a gain on your long runs at the moment. Yeah, I mean, that's a bit, a bit of Achilles heel for us this year. So the guys have been working pretty hard at it. They pretty much know what the issue is. It's just trying to dial that out. So, yeah, I think we're looking all right. But, yeah, as I say, it's a long way to go. It's going to be exciting. Thanks, mate. It will be. The car's definitely strong at the back end of this at the moment. And yeah. uh, maybe too much so. They maybe didn't quite have the point that they wanted early on. But they're protecting the rear tyres late. Now, Most has got a little bit more pace than Van Gisbergen here. So, remember, they made quite a significant change to the rear right height on Shane's car, taking some turn out of the car, putting some drive into the car to get it to launch off the turns. Winterbottom's coming in. So little changes make a big impact difference on the behaviour of these cars. And it just looks to me a little bit at the moment as though Shane's just lost a little bit of edge. Now that might clean up for him at the back end of the stint. Right now he's a little vulnerable. Here's Frosty on the right hand side Come of the screen. The right. Frosty was compromised by Chris Pippa. He was to do a big swing in. It'll be interesting to see whether Mark Winterbottom can get out in front of Courtney. Okay, so, you think you're going to get so there's Courtney. There's the battle also with Mostert and Van Gisbergen just in front. As Neil said, Mostert looks like he's got good pace. Check this exit out now. There's the Bottolo Falcon. And no, Courtney's going to get by by a fair margin, actually. So, seriously, he's going to have to work hard now, Mark Winterbottom. We saw the pace. In fact, he's been at the end of each of the stints, the fastest car, but now he's got to get his head down. Since we last saw Shane Van Gisbergen racing a supercar in Darwin, he's been across to France driving in the Garage 59 McLaren GT program in their factory program. He's won another race over there at Paul Ricard 1000, and that was just one week after Darwin off the back of a race. Remember, he was the last race winner in our championship season off the back of those two poles earning his dollars this afternoon because he's got a lot of pressure on him at the moment from Chaz Mostert as they make the run out of eight, nine, now ten through this long right-hander. And Chaz is having a sniff here. Looks to position the Falcon down the inside. Pokes it down there. Shane leaves the gap. And nicely done, Chaz Mostert. That is fourth position and confirms the pace in that car. And Mostert covers to the left-hander at 13. Now, will Van Gisbergen's car be a little stronger at the back end of the stint? Is Moster taking too much out of the tyre? We're about to find out. We'll look at this side-by-side -side drag. Moster on the inside for Super Cheap. In the Red Bull Holden Commodore, it's Van Gisbergen through one. Millimetres between them on the run down to two from 250 kilometres an hour. We're on for the crisscross. Todd Kelly did a good job of this earlier. It didn't quite work out for Shane. That was a beautiful manoeuvre by Chaz Mostert through turn 10 and got it sideways and up down the inside at turn 11. It was a great braking manoeuvre by Mostert. Then it went on with it, with a crisscross down the main straight from turn 13 and alongside each other into turn two. Great racing by two of the very best operators in the field. Here we go, that's turn 10. It was right out sideways. Nice ride control through the Boundary Street crossing there over the bumps and down the inside goes Chaz Mostert. And then this battle continued all the way to the final corner because Shane wasn't surrendering. He was looking for crisscross at the final corner. He turns in from the widest possible turn in point. Look at him at the apex there, gets up the inside. Awesome exchange between those two. Nice job. And there was nothing in their straight line speed. They come onto the straight alongside each other. 255k to game of chicken as to who can break the latest. Van Gisberg is slightly later, but he couldn't turn back the other side. We saw Todd Kelly do a beautiful manoeuvre there a couple of laps ago. The effect of all this is that James Courtney got closer on that last lap as a result of these two in that exchange. There's James, car 22, and Mark Winterbottom just behind. So this little battle that's going on between Mostert and Van Gisbergen is actually condensing that pack at the moment. Meantime, the race leader is still actually Fabian Coulthard. Yet to do his second stop. Then it's a Jamie Wincup from Chaz Mostert and Shane Van Gisbergen. So he's trying hard, Mostert, now to get a little gap. 
on Shane. That was the spot. He had it right out sideways. He turned it across. He almost had the two wheels on the inside in the grass. He used every little bit of road. He got the momentum. He got the car close enough to Van Gisbergen for turn 11. And it was a, a beautiful maneuver down the inside at 11. Coulthard in. So that reveals this man on screen, Wind Cup, as the clean leader of the race at the moment. He's got a wall of traffic to deal with here. Blanchard, Pippa, Percat, there's Coulthard. My cars are done. It's running on fuel. A couple of seconds away here. Couldn't make a clear. You've got to go and get dropped. Go, 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 go. And Winterbottom's making serious pace. Mark Winterbottom, fastest lap of the race for him on the previous lap of 13.6. Fastest car in the lead group by a margin. Craig Lowndes in 14, Cam Waters and Scott Pye ahead. And Coulthard's dropped into ninth position. Tenth position, I beg your pardon. So 9.3 seconds margin, wind cup over Mostert. Got a decent gap that he can play with as Waters has a look down the inside. How's this going to work out? Very tight on the exit. And then Pye's compelled to come back to the right because of the wall shape down there. And on it goes to turn three. Waters down the inside. Still a little in the way of room on the exit. Lowndes looks to try and make a gain. Looking to see whether or not he can pick up the crumbs. And the shadows are long out there at the moment. It makes it very hard to pick up all your regular references. So Waters has cleanly been able to resolve this in his favour over Pye with Lowndes right there. And Lowndes has got pressure from Kelly. And look at this. On they go. This battle between Van Gisbergen and Boston continues to rage. Shane escorts him across the road ever so slightly. Chaz gets back up the inside. Van Gisbergen responds. Great battle between these two. Oh, 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 oh. that is fantastic stuff. I oh, got into turn five. It's very fast. At 135k mid corner speed, and he fired back down the inside. That is a great exchange. They've been battling. He must have made a little mistake, Mostert, because Van Gisbergen essentially got back down the inside at turn two. And this is not resolved. But check out the gaps behind. Courtney's in play. Mark Winterbottom's in play. This is for second, third, fourth, and fifth. And the Mostert Van Gisbergen battle has greatly helped Courtney and Winterbottom. Tremendous pressure of motor racing. They're coming up onto the back of Aaron Russell. Something is going to happen here. There'll be a move pulled. 20 laps remaining. Check those times. 14-4. He's a second faster than Van Gisbergen, Mark Winterbottom. Great job. Damage for Kirk Pistecki in right rear of that car. Now, is that something that happened earlier? Or is this a new scar? I think this is. Oh, that's actually a big scar. So that uh, tells us the answer we needed to that question in the Preston Hire Holden Commodore. We're looking at the from the rear bumper, I should say, of Chas Mostert's car at Shane Van Gisbergen on the run down to two. Looking down the inside. He's going to get it done. And there you go. Nice work. So that's the replay. And this is where you said he was escorting him to the right. Chaz, he just kept on playing, so I like how hardcore Chaz is with that. He did a good job. A lot of gamesmanship between those two guys. And then this spot, Van Gisbergen tried to put the nose of the Commodore down the inside of the Falcon at turn five. And great exchange, as I said before. I've just asked Aaron Russell to clear this pack I think it was uh, Teco, Matt Nilsson on the radio said, just let these guys go, stay out of their way, which he's done. So great sportsmanship for those guys. And look again at the manoeuvre down the inside for Van Gisbergen. Had to look in two directions then because Frosty was looking at James Courtney. 19 laps remaining, a lot of racing to come. Still a nine second margin, win cup over Mostert. He's making hay while these guys are all in this battle. This is hurting Frosty because he's, as we said before, he's got genuine pace. So there are the gaps for you. He's had a little look down the inside there at turn seven. This is a little complex. You give it a little bump. 
Mark Winterbottom, and he's up the inside. Gets it done. This is wild stuff through turn 10. That's the fastest corner on the track. 180k mid-corner speed there. And Frosty, he wasn't going to be messed with. We saw him do a similar thing to Van Gisbergen in Tasmania this year. It's an aggressive Mark Winterbottom who got that manoeuvre nicely made in a pretty volatile spot. So clearly the quickest car out there at the moment is Mark Winterbottom, and he's using it to very good effect. James, because he had to run so wide, then would also have a bit of pickup dirt and rubber on those tyres, which then hurt him for the next few hundred metres as this little battle continues. So Van Gisbergen's car has got better as it's taken the edge off those tyres and they progress further in. Replay shows what happens here. Watch Frosty. He had to use some sh hip and shoulder here to get through and get it done. He rattled on the door of the hold. Here it is again. Good manoeuvre. Very good manoeuvre. <laughs> Pretty brave stuff. They could have consequences for both. James rolled out of it, but then he was in the weeds. So out there on the marbles, he had to get right off that throttle. Little bump. James came well out of the throttle, as I described before. And then uh, just tucked back in. Some sweaty palms there, Nathaniel Osborne and Jason Gray in the foreground. So final corner here. Van Gisbergen on Moston, second and third. 8.4 seconds the margin. That's the margin to the leader. So what would be interesting is a safety car at this point of the race because Wink Cup has done a tremendous job. He's got an eight and a half second lead over Moston. Then the next group, Moston, Van Gisbergen, went bottom. As you can see, they're very, very close. Winterbottom is the fastest of those group of cars. He's just dropped off the back of Ben Gisberg a little bit there now. The other guy that's worth keeping an eye on also, Mark, is Fabian Coulthard Knight. Because they ran him longer, he's on fresher tyres. And he will make ground in this phase of the race now as well. So he's ninth between Caruso and David Reynolds with Wink up the leader. Point three seconds is the gap between Wind Cup and Mostert. And this is a wild ride. I actually reckon we should stay here for a second. Just watch Shane at work. And he's going to throw everything at the adjustments on that brake bias and the anti-roll bars. He's actually given Mostert a little tap up here. Let's just ride with this and enjoy it. On the inside comes Van Gisbergen. Chaz just makes it relatively easy. Looks for the crisscross. There's good drive traction on the exit of turn two there at the moment. They use it well. And Chaz just needed another couple of millimetres down there into three. He couldn't quite make it stick. And Gizzy hangs on. <laughs> Haven't they had a great race? It's been one of the best races of the year so far. Two of the most flamboyant. Great racing drivers. Great car control from both guys. I bet you Frosty's are going to go, these guys are playing for keeps. They're playing for keeps, but they're playing fairly. They are. They're, they're giving each other space. It's absolutely on the mat, 100%. It's brilliant driving from both of them. Astonishing that you think that two vehicles, different vehicles from different crews, with different engineering philosophies and different styles of driver can end up so incredibly closely matched. And isn't it weird with the phases of the race, because... Only four or five laps ago, Mostert had genuine pace on Van Gisbergen. And then how the tide turns... A little bit with 15 laps to go. How the tide turns, Van Gisbergen able to get that pass made in the same spot. They've had two or three exchanges right here. And was just able to get up far enough. So they take two different lines on the way out of turn two there. Red Bull moved in that last pit stop with car number 97 to protect the drive traction of the car. It becomes more evident later in this tyre stint. And that's what Van Gisbergen used very effectively in that pass on Mostert. Undercutting on the inside of turn two. Squared the rear of the car up, got the throttle percentage in early and eased on by. Now, does Chaz have anything in reserve? And how do they manage 
55 plays one here as well. Because Frosty, we saw the graphic earlier, has had great pace in that car, but now he's got the added problem of applying the pace, trying to find a way around these two guys. Don't look like they're in the mood to be <laughs> insisting that someone ease on by. That's exactly right. They've both been very good, and it's been aggressive racing from Van Gisbergen. It's been aggressive from Mostert. It's also been aggressive from Winterbottom. That pass on James Courtney was very good. And as you said, the quasi teammates now with Winterbottom up in behind Mostert. There's your gaps. So big gain. The 1.3 seconds was affected by the dicing. And but the, the rest of the time, roughly two or three tenths of a second faster at the moment. And you can just see a slightly narrower line for Winterbottom on all the exits. You can just see that mid-corner pace Red Rooster Chopper Camp shows it very well in terms of the flow of Mark Winterbottom's car. And this is a great parkland piece, but this is where the tyre gets loaded. So after the left-hander, it goes right from turn eight, right through turn nine, then the big fast spot there before that Winterbottom speared down the inside of Courtney. Breaking zone into 11, Wink Cup maintains an eight-second lead of the Van Gisbergen Mostert winner bottom. 14 laps remaining. The Castrol Edge Townsville 400 race 14 of our championship. The margin is just a little under eight seconds between Wind Cup and Van Gisbergen. We've seen an incredible exchange between car number 97 Shane Van Gisbergen and 55 Chaz Mostert. Super cheap plays Red Bull. They've gone over, around and under each other <laughs> repeatedly. They've done it cleanly. It's been a tremendous race. The signs around here say Townsville alive with curiosity. And we're curious. We're not sure how this podium's going to play out at the moment. That was the move a little earlier by Van Gisbergen. And then Mostert tried to respond down the inside. All he needed was another fraction, another couple of millimetres, and he could have got it done down there at three. <laughs> it wasn't to be. It was a nice move by Shane, wasn't it? So how's it going to play out? At the moment, the margin that Jamie's got over Shane looks pretty safe, but the rest of it is very hard to unravel. Will it be Van Gisberg and Most at Winterbottom on that podium? How will that work? This is Moffat versus Cam Waters. These fellas are 13th and 14th at the moment. Lowndes has been quiet, hasn't he? He has. Especially in comparison with Wink Cup. Wink Cup has done the fastest lap of the race. In fact, the new lap record, a 13.34. Van Gisbergen's fastest lap is a 13.49. Well, it's been uh, two very different drives by the two Red Bull guys. One's just been out the front doing an amazing job. All by himself, pretty boring race. And then Shane Van Gisbergen and Mark Dutton. It's been two very different races for your two guys. I mean, what an exciting battle between uh, Mostert and SVG. It's been fantastic to watch. Yeah, talk about uh, never giving up, mate. Right? Just chipping away, chipping away. It was, uh, it was awesome. Uh, hope it stays that way. Yeah, and, and Jamie, he's been pretty lonely out there, but man, it's been commanding. That, uh, that, uh, that car of his, the 88, is looking super strong. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're in a little bit of lap traffic right now, so he's hurting a bit more than he should be, so uh, that, that maybe needs to be addressed. We're getting dirty air that uh, isn't respective to the, 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 the leader. Seven seconds up the road, still a nice gap. It's not bad. <laughs> that would be what we describe as an understatement. It's very true. In a business that's been separated in many instances with qualifying and races this year by a tenth or two. Down the inside comes Mark Winterbottom for a little sniff, a look. Chaz gives him some space down there, and he's got it done. I wasn't sure how that was going to play out in the end. Reasonably easy. Actually, in fact, he locked a break. He, he ran a little bit wide by himself there, Chaz. Now, Mark Winterbottom, he's clear of his teammate. This is another angle of this little manoeuvre, which, as I said, started with Mostert being a little bit deep under brakes, ran a little bit wide by himself, made it easy for Mark Winterbottom. Now the guys, they've got their race face on. Ten laps to go. He's got five lap fresher, newer tyres than Wink Cup and Van Gisbergen. Can he make some inroads? He was the fastest car in the previous sector of the race before the last stop and see how much ground straight away he's made on Chaz Mostert. We pick up on Bright, Moffat and Pye in turn 13. As you said, Craig Lowndes has been very quiet today and Lowndes 
in 13th position, not showing the signs of pace that Winkup and Van Gisbergen have been able to show today, but it has been a beautiful drive by Jamie Winkup. Great qualifying, beautiful start, hasn't made a mistake. That little moment down there at turn 11 is the only sign that we've seen of any real problem for Jamie Winkup thus far. He's got a six and a half second lead over Van Gisbergen. And we'll give you some lap times. 15-2 Winkup, 14-5 Van Gisbergen, 14-8 Winterbottom. So Van Gisbergen is pressing on very hard. He's the fastest of those first three cars at the moment. What's interesting me at the moment, looking at those numbers that you just covered off though, was that, and I know that Mark Dutton said there was some traffic effect here, but Winkup was up in the low to mid 15s then. And, and he hasn't been quick in the last couple of laps, so just trying to work out what it is that's affecting him. There we go. There's the answer. I think that it might be the cool drive car, that, and he's eating up the hot air behind that car at the moment. So just hurting his sector splits a bit at the moment. 6.5 seconds, so still a healthy cushion by any stretch, but and that, can't that's afford right. for it to disappear too much, because yeah, here we go. It's blowing up. Roland's blowing up because there should be blue flags shown to uh, to Jamie Winkup and the cars in front. So here we go. This is why. And he's being lapped, so there should be a blue flag out there. Roland's blowing. Well, it, it's his, it is up on the uh, race controller, put it up on the timing, and he has given him space down there. The boys, uh, yeah, well, it's been going on for quite a while, and because we haven't been watching him, because he's had such a lead and he's doing a beautiful job out the front, the triple one was holding him up as well. He's been complaining about it for quite some time, and also the triple two of Percat gave him a pretty hard time. So he's lost a lot of time, and as you know, that hot air that he's been gathering behind those cars too has been having an effect on uh, the handling of that car. So he's finally clear, and we'll just see what he can do. He's got that good lead still. He can manage it, but uh, they're certainly not very happy about it down here at Red Bull big battle going on between Todd Kelly and David Reynolds here as well so these guys are exchanging positions 10 and 11 at the moment so and incidentally Roland's not necessarily hooking into his own guys what he's doing is hooking into them asking them to send a note to race control via the land that's what it'll be can we get blue flags please now this battle goes on and on and on as well because these guys have been in rattling along for a little while here Coulthard remember with a fresher tyre set on that car he and Michael Caruso are exchanging track position at the moment, 8th and 9th. So here's some times. So a 15-4 for Winkup, a 14-6 for Van Gisbergen, a 14-9 for Winterbottom. So this is not over. Van Gisbergen is making big ground, big inroads. As Fabian gets down the inside here at turn three, he escorts Caruso wide, then they accelerate down turn five and as a consequence we saw that maneuver where Caruso was able to maintain that spot but there's your gaps 0.6 and 0.8 respectively there those two laps here's Van Gisbergen now he doesn't want to get caught with Rick Kelly so he's using every little bit of road on the way into that complex there's Jamie Winkup coming out of turn 10 and then you'll see Van Gisbergen in a second who is able to get by. Nicely done, Rick Kelly. Just come out of the throttle nicely. Didn't affect Shane Van Gisbergen's run. So SVG is on a charge. Can he get there? 5.8 seconds is the gap. And Coulthard has got the job done finally on Caruso. It's taken lap after lap after lap for Fabian in the pink Hogs Breath Falcon this weekend to get by the new livery. This an ultimate of Michael Caruso. So that margin has just been maintained now in the last half a lap between Winkup and Van Gisbergen as we're focusing on these fellas. This little battle here at the moment is eighth and ninth, as I said before. Here's the replay of Fabian's clean move down the inside. Tire conditions helping that cause. It was a later stop for Fabian. Here we are oh. on board. He barely stopped it. <laughs> it sounded like a machine gun, and didn't it? At the back of it, it's just popping up and down under braking and then up the inside on the run here to turn three so he was barely able to stop it down there only got it just done yesterday he had some problems actually stopping down there at two for a different reason it was the front right tire that was giving him grief 
super slow-mo here of Jamie Wincup. 5.7 seconds is the margin. We saw these images yesterday of the incredible distortion of the tyre wall and the protruding supercar rim on the car. And we both commented on the extraordinary job the tyre does of staying on the bead with that incredible load on it. Cropper, I thought I'd just duck into DJR Team Penske and have a word to Dr Ryan's story. The boys have just reflected on the fact that tyre condition for Fabian is, is helping him here. Can he get to Garth Tanner, do you think? Oh, look, it might be a bit of a struggle, but, yeah, certainly fresher tyres helped us get around Caruso then. The first stint that we had, we struggled quite a bit. I think it might have been a dodgy set of tyres, but uh, we're, we're, we've got a direction this afternoon. We struggled yesterday. Went, 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 went a pretty aggressive route in qualifying to try and find, find ourselves somewhere in the window, and it holds us in good stead for tomorrow. Absolutely, though. We're struggling on Friday. That's a good turnaround today for DJ Artin Penske. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Currently in eighth position, Fabian Coulthard. Garth Pander is next in the queue. And Scott Pye, meantime, in the Shell Helix entry, he's in 15th place for Dick Johnson Racing. Team Penske. Didn't catch my little pit walk earlier on. Um, Fabian was leaving the circuit last night. And, oh, there's Nick Percat with trouble with that car. Could be it's a actually, safety car. Yeah, he's in the... Just let us know if you can or not. I was going to see you off track there. This, this could change the trigger. game. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, this will turn the five-second gap from Wink up to Van Gisbergen to zero. And he parks Martin Winterbottom right in there. So off the road at turn six. And there's a lot of damage to that car through the course of the weekend. It finally makes the fence very strange. He had a steering, steering problem or a flat tyre or there had been a steering failure. Look at the angle of the left front. So it's got a massive amount of toe in on that side. Safety car. So, safety car. Wow. Here we go. So the Lexus RCF safety wow. car is coming out. Oh. There goes all the margin. 5.7 seconds evaporates like that. Click of a fingers. Wind cup over Van Gisbergen. This will energise the back end of this race as Nick Perkat climbs out of the stricken Holden Commodore for Lucas Dumbrell. Who's got the raciest car at the back end of this? Wind Cup or Van Gisbergen or Winterbottom, who's been making great inroads. And remember, fresh tyres on Fabian Coulthard's car, but he doesn't have track position. He's in position eight at the moment, but a quick car will always help the cause. Now, there's markers on the wall around here to provide the drivers and the crews with the opportunity to see where the gaps are so that you can climb out off the active racetrack. Out goes the safety car. The field is under control. We've got five laps remaining. Man, what a frustrating weekend for Nick Perkat at Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. The team believe, as you say, that it's a steering fail of some kind. What a shame. Yeah, the left front of that car looked pretty ordinary as he was touring off the road there. Remember, there was a lot of damage on the front of it too, Greg, from early on. But sometimes the problems manifest from an issue that occurred earlier in the race. So there's the race leader, Jamie Wincup. Trail trouble. A little bit of overrun on the exhaust there. The light lowers. It's more visible to us. And uh, this big margin that he's been enjoying all afternoon with great poise, great pace, great tyre life. That's an awesome image. Well, that's all about to disappear. How's our cameraman there, Gerald Binogue? That's a great shot. He's been doing that all weekend for us at turn five and turn six. And you see the amount of travel that the wheel uses in the guard. You also see the bodywork onto the ground. And now Rod Nash on your right, Tim Edwards on your left, talking at ProDrive about how this is going to unfold. Because remember, Winterbottom has tyres that are five laps better, newer, than Wing Cup and Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen was on a charge to get to Wing Cup. He was not going to get there with a 5.7 second lead, but now it's zero. The only thing that Wing Cup's got going for him here at the moment is that he may have backed it off a little bit. That's A. And B, there are two cars in between. So Blanchard and Pitha are between Wink Up and Van Gisbergen on track. So at the restart, Jamie will need to be very aggressive, get away, as Tim Slade comes in to put another set of tyres on. He wants to use this up and spear through the field at the last piece with fresh tyres on, remembering everybody will be hurt in terms of tyre degradation at this stage. So the safety car is really containing the speed to a very low speed here because there's only four laps remaining and you saw Nick Perkat's car was still out there on its own. It's going to take another lap at least to be able to recover that car. It's a gorgeous scene, isn't it? 
So that means it's going to be a pretty intense run. There might only be a couple of laps to the chequered flag on this one. So that's the reason why they reacted. So the two cars behind you, Blanchard and Pitta, are not for position. The next car behind you for position is Shane. So there's Nick climbing out of the car in the recovery flatbed truck just coming out there to get the car triple two off the racetrack. So Dave Couch has been on and they're doing the same with Scotty McLaughlin as they did with Tim Slade, just putting another set of tyres on there and hoping that when the train is compressed, they'll get some benefit out of it. Now, um, they've been reassuring Jamie that don't worry, because of course, when you lose all that margin, the first thing that enters your head is you're kidding me. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that is right. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. That can't possibly be right. This is not how the script read. So David's been on the phone to him, just reassuring him that your, your sector pace is great. All the temps look good. You know, everything's OK. It's sort of steadying the ship, doing a bit of coaching, making sure that he understands that when we light up, away we go. But he did put special emphasis on what you can see there now. He said, I want you to maintain lots of temperature in those tyres and brakes. And so Windcup's responding there, doing everything he can. But what uh, also happens... One lap to race, so I want you to make sure you get plenty of temperature into the car, please. Oh, is there an echo? Yeah, I thought you just said that. But the second part of that is that when you are Jamie Winkup and you've worked hard, you've taken big risks, you had almost six second gap, you don't want to have to go and do that again. It energizes the race, that's all fine, but you've taken the risk, you got the lead, and this situation now will be very interesting to see just how aggressive Winkup is at the restart. And what David Couchy was saying, very importantly, is there are two cars between as the restart unfolds. Now they may just tuck this car into a safe on the tray. Uh, this will minimize the safety car time. Yep. Yeah, in fact, you can see there's a little exit slot down there. That's, that's a clever thing to do from the race officials. Tim Shankin, race director, instructing the car to be moved around the corner, which shortens the time for the recovery and therefore shortens the time behind the Lexus safety car. And that will mean that we get at least a proper two-lap run to the end. There'll be some desperation in this, you can yes. guarantee. There'll, there'll be, be a few guys here that'll have a circuit breaker pop-out moment, and uh, away they'll go. You know, the, the street circuit specialists, those that are known to be a little more aggressive, particularly uh, if you're... No more weaving, braking. Here we go. Lights are out. We're going to get a restart. There'll this is going to be on. Holding your speed, maintain your speed. Dave Couchy oh, counselling the Wind Cup. The green flag, but you look out for them as well, please. Bit of traffic as you described. Two cars back is Van Gisbergen. That, that little green cushion flag, is vital. Flag. Go, go. That's what he's done. So green flags and he's gone. So that's a very clever move because remember, Van Gisbergen can't pass into the control line. So Jamie had to do that to extend the gap. Oh, he's got to be he can't careful. pass, he can't pass, and he doesn't. Remember, he got caught at Darwin doing the same thing with Michael Caruso. So around the outside goes Van Gisbergen on fellow New Zealander, Chris Pither, and he spears down the inside on Blanchard. Aggressive stuff across the curb, gets it done. So now, a sensational motor race because Van Gisbergen is 1.4 seconds away from his teammate, and it's on. That was awkward for Van Hinsberg and nothing worse than having to fan the throttle before you get to that control line. And look at the margin. It's 1.7 seconds. Wink up over Van Gisbergen. And Winterbottom still hasn't cleared the traffic. Here we are. So there's three cars there that he's got to get by. One of them is Rick Kelly. He's looking down the inside now to try and get him at 11. Have a go down the inside there. There's a big battle going on between Tander and Davison. It's on down here at 11. People moving every which way. Coulthard's the one with the young rubber. He looks to feed it up the inside of Garth Tander. James Courtney's in there as well. One lap remaining. 2.86 kilometres to run in this 200 kilometre encounter. Right now it's 2.2 seconds in favour of Wing Cup. Rick Kelly, done. Box ticked. He's not, he's not going to be able to do anything about Van Gisbergen. No way. The traffic at the back end has played a role here. 
great restart by Jamie Winkup. That is real gamesmanship. That's experienced race head. And the way that he got that done by accelerating between turn 12 and turn 13, extended the gap. He's been superb today, Neil. This is an absolutely magnificent drive. A trademark. Jamie Winkup has not made a mistake. To arrived here this weekend as our championship leader in the breaking area now for turn 11 for the final time. He's controlled the race beautifully this afternoon. <laughs> he bags it up through turn 12. He was the winner of race number one of the championship season back in Adelaide, right at the very beginning. Now race 14, he pulls that stunt yeah. once again. Well done, well done Jamie Winkup. the commentary for us. It was a one-two <laughs> for Red Bull Racing Australia and the Holden Commodore. Winner bottom in third, Boston fourth. Will Davison got James Courtney oh, man, at the end. Awesome. Well done, brother. Great drive, man. Dave Couchy's happy. Well done, brother. It was a great drive. Awesome read of the situation at the back end there and at Triple Eight Race Engineering and Red Bull, they're pretty pleased with that one. And that is career <laughs> victory number 99 for Jamie Wincup. He's second of 2016. He's 157th podium and acknowledged by his teammate. An awesome performance from all three of the gentlemen that are on screen at the moment. Frosty finishes in third place. Van Gisbergen in second. Jamie Wincup, our winner this afternoon. Beautiful drive by Wincup, but also a great battle. That exchange today with Van Gisbergen and Most, it was one of the best of the year. Winterbottom on those fresher tyres was able to get by his teammate and onto the podium. And the elation at the end of this race. Check how close this was. Courtney and Davison, one of the closest finishes we've seen. And he gets there. I but... saw it go past the commentary <laughs> box and then I looked at the computer timing and the computer confirmed it and up went that move so unbelievable finish between those two big exchange a few points in that one as well they'll be feeling it too that was a was a long hot hard run this afternoon I wonder what the thoughts are there for Tim Edwards meantime just a little further down the lane at Red Bull Racing they're celebrating the return to victory lane of Jamie Wincup back in the pit lane now that was pretty impressive performance Evidence of that was there in that 12-1 for qualifying. Straight away, that was the mark of a great car. And remember, it wasn't there to start with yesterday. They did a, a change with about 10 minutes to go at the back end of practice two, lit that car up. Hasn't looked backwards since then, but I'll bet that he, together with everybody else in that garage, was a little bit worried when that safety car came out at the very end. You bet victory lane for Jamie Wincup, position number one for him. 1-2 for the team. Shane Van Gisbergen alongside. Shane was the winner last time out. He's had a win overseas in between. He's back on the podium again today. And Frosty redeems himself after the difficult Sunday in Darwin. Very good performance. Winner bottom to get onto the podium. Here's Mark Dutton straight up to Jamie. He'll go up and see his teammate. These guys have got a much better report. In fact, I like his comment at the start of the race. He said, we get on better than Lewis <laughs> and Nico. Probably not hard. Rosberg and Hamilton. We've seen the dramas there and a lot of serious respect between those two guys. They're very, very fast. And this beautiful shot of the car right in the bumper turn six. He drove so well. And as I said before, it's a trademark wing cup performance. Can I play men of the match? Because yep. I thought men of the match was Mostert and Van Gisbergen. Yes. He thoroughly enjoyed the battle between those guys. But right now we're celebrating a wonderful victory. It was a three and a half second margin at the end for Jamie Wincup. Jamie Wincup, welcome back to the Uvent Victory Lane. It's been a little while since the Clips 500, but you had command of that race the entire time. Yeah, we've been working hard. The cover's fantastic. Um, obviously, right with the result. Plenty of uh, plenty of frustration going on behind the scenes, but uh, no need to worry about that now. Just uh, one, two for Red Bull. Important weekend for us, and uh, we're up to, to be able to deliver. What went through your mind when that safety car was called? Oh, I knew it was going to. Yeah, that's an entertainment safety car, that one. Although that car probably was in the wrong spot. So. 
So that was uh, that was fairly legit, but even so, it would have been pulled anyway. Enjoy the celebrations on the podium. Jamie, Shane Van Gisbergen on the podium once again. You gave us plenty of entertainment the entire way through that race. The battle with Chaz Mottet, outstanding. Yeah, my second stint wasn't very good. I went off, so I decided to save at the start of the third, and Chaz came through flying. I thought I was in trouble, and then he went off, and oh, awesome battle, really clean, hard fight, and, and enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, come home a second, one, two for the team. Thanks to Red Bull Racing, great cars. Enjoy the celebrations on the podium. Mark Winterbottom, I know this would mean a lot to you. You wanted to redeem yourself after a tough weekend out in Darwin, and, and the car was fast throughout the race. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that, with um, with how the drive was. But uh, the other guy's just a bit too quick. But we um, just tried to hang in there. You know, it's a long race, and you're just bumping curves, and things are bending, and it's slowly bending in the uh, in the car. So we just hung on. But um, yeah, thirds as good as I could have done today. So I'm pretty happy. Entertaining stuff. We'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations. Cheers. Ta. Just uh, sneak in and grab Chaz's thoughts. Uh, Shane Van Gisbergen, pretty excited about that battle out there, mate. Uh, the two of you had backwards and forwards. I mean, it was tight, close, and heaps of respect. Yeah, no, I love racing Shane. He races hard, but um, he braces pretty fair. So a little bit of Rubbins racing, but um, hopefully I can be on the uh, other side of him next time and maybe in front of him. Hey, so how did you think that played out, you, you know, with the tyre dig and those kinds of things? Was you slip back there at the end? Push too hard, maybe when you got onto the, your second set, or you know, was that just the way the car was? Um, for me, the the first two stints, the car felt really good, and that last stint, just the, the car balance wasn't quite there. So, don't know, maybe clobbered the curves a bit too hard, and then something shifted. But we'll um, we'll see what happens. But before that, I was pretty happy, and yeah, just trying to conserve behind Shane. But um, yeah, I had to have a crack. So uh, when you're behind that thing, you got to have a crack, mate. Exactly, you got to have a crack. Good on you. Thanks, guys. Great sportsmanship to see the boys grinning there, Shane Van Gisbergen and Chaz Mostert. What a battle they had this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed that one. Here is the unofficial result from race number 14. Jamie Wincup gets home by three and a half seconds from his teammate. Then it's Winterbottom, Mostert, Davis and Courtney. That changed with a few millimetres to go at the end of the race. Tander's done a remarkable job, 20th to 7th. Coulthard fresh tyres served him well at the end. Caruso ninth, then Todd Kelly's 500th run this afternoon. Reynolds and Lowndes. Craig had a quiet run this afternoon. Good recovery, Tim Slade to get into 13th. Bright Heimgarten awarders Moffat Pye looking further afield there. Nick Perkat was the one that unfortunately triggered the safety car at the end. The podium is set. Let's enjoy the victory for Win Cup. What a fantastic afternoon of racing. Race 14 of the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, the Castrol Edge Townsville 400. In first place today from Red Bull Racing Australia, Jamie Wincup. Our second place driver also from Red Bull Racing Australia, it's Shane Van Gisbergen. And in third position from the Bottolo Racing Team, Mark Winterbottom. Representing our Castrol Edge winning team this afternoon from Red Bull Racing Australia, Mark Dutton. To present our winning trophies for race 14. Karis DeWald, Virgin Australia cabin crew, our third place trophy. Delivering our second place trophy, a very proud mayor of Townsville, Jenny Hill. Our Castrol Edge winning team trophy appropriately comes from Diana Hall, Castrol Marketing Director, Australia and New Zealand. And awarding the first place trophy today, the Honourable Mark Bailey, Minister for Main Roads and Road Safety here in Queensland. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Castrol Edge Townsville 400 Race 14 podium. Well done, Mark Winterbottom, Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Wincup. Victorious this afternoon, race 14 of the championship, the Castrol Edge, Townsville 400. And Red Bull have delivered in the recent past, haven't they? Pole positions and wins in Darwin. Pole position here and wins. And here's the championship scenario. And it's opened up that margin, Wincup over Van Gisbergen. But look how close it is between Shane and Mark Winterbottom. Just a point separating those two at the moment. And then looking further afield, McLaughlin... Not a great afternoon for him. We'll see what they can deliver for us tomorrow. Shrewd move by Tim Slade and that group to generate some impressive points after they change tyres at the very end to keep him in the top ten. Highlight time now. Race number 14 of the championship for the Castrol Edge Townsville 400. 200 kilometres, 70 laps. It seems a long time ago that this one started in a blaze of sunshine and 25 degrees in a gentle northeasterly. And straight away, as always, it was on from the very beginning. McLaughlin and Wood 
were in the wars early on. There was trouble down here at Turn 11 as well, involving Tim Slade and Rick Kelly. That damaged both gentlemen and their cars and the opportunity to score for the afternoon. James Courtney has been very quick throughout the weekend, further building on the fact that we know they're strong on street circuits, but Red Bull found something late yesterday afternoon in the setup of their cars, and we enjoyed one of the finest motor racing exchanges between a couple of absolute pros this afternoon between Van Gisbergen and Mostert. Regardless of whether you're a Holden or a Ford fan, these guys delivered for us. Great action, great energy, great respect, millimetres between them. I reckon those palms were sweaty for Tim Edwards. It was a remarkable amount of traction available for the crisscross move on the inside on the exit of turn two. Trouble here for Nick Perkett very late in the race. It looked like either a tyre had gone flat or the steering had failed. Safety car came out, field compressed. We had a couple of laps of racing to go. And this little bit of traffic did play a role. Winkup read it perfectly. He bolted off into the distance. He ended up pushing out the cushion to three and a half seconds. Shane hung on for second place. Jamie picks up career victory number 99. He might end up with 100 tomorrow. And Mark Winterbottom got the job done in the end. There's the boys from Red Bull. They've done a mighty job today. And we're looking forward to another beautiful day here in North Queensland tomorrow. Townsville has turned it on once again. It's a great venue, a great racetrack, more great racing to come. Race number 15 tomorrow for another 70 laps and 200 Ks.